you're watching Bermuda tonight. It's Tuesday, May 21st, 2019. I'm Diane Brewer, and thank you for joining us. Concern being expressed by some members of the LGBTQ community over the August 17th concert featuring reggae megastar Buju Banton, specifically accusing the artist of gay bashing over a song he wrote while still a teenager and for which he has issued an international apology. Here's Gary Moreno with more. Sources in the Department of Immigration confirming to us that complaints had been made referencing the song Boom Bye Bye, which Buju, whose real name is Mark Myrie, wrote when he was 15 years old and which he no longer performs. According to our source, once the complaint was made, it was brought to the attention of Wayne Kings, the Minister of National Security, who was responsible for immigration matters. We're told further to that complaint, concerns were raised as to why a convicted felon was being allowed onto the island to perform. Mr. Myrie, you may remember, was sentenced to 10 years in jail after being found guilty in the U.S. courts of conspiracy to possess with intent to distribute five or more kilograms of cocaine, possession of a firearm in furtherance of a drug trafficking offense, and using communication wires to facilitate a drug trafficking offense. Under the Immigration and Protection Act 1956, a person arriving in Bermuda shall be deemed to be an exceptionable person if he has, since attaining the age of 14 years, been convicted in any place of an offense of a nature punishable in Bermuda with imprisonment for a term of two years or more. However, the law also allows for the minister responsible for immigration to use his discretion to allow an individual into the country, those restrictions notwithstanding. That being said, our source at the ministry confirmed to us that Minister Keynes has been advised against using that discretion, but has chosen to ignore that advice and will allow the reggae and dancehall superstar into the island. We understand Mr. Keynes has taken into consideration the fact that countries such as Trinidad and Tobago, Grenada, Guyana, St. Kitts, Belgium, Suriname, France and Germany have all allowed Buju Banton in as he arrived at his decision. Upon hearing our initial report, representatives of Out Bermuda contacted our newsroom to indicate they were working alongside the promoters of the Buju Banton concert and that Out Bermuda was not involved in any efforts to prevent the concert taking place. Mr. Myrie himself has previously issued a statement on the Boom Bye Bye song. In that statement he indicated, quote, There has been a great deal of press coverage about the song Boom Bye Bye from my past, which I long ago stopped performing and removed from any platform that I control or have influence over. I recognize that the song has caused much pain to listeners as well as to my fans, my family and myself. After all the adversity we've been through, I am determined to put this song in the past and continue moving forward as an artist and as a man. I affirm once and for all that everyone has the right to live as they so choose. I welcome everyone to my shows in a spirit of peace and love. Gary Moreno, reporting for the Bermuda Broadcasting News. And Minister Keynes confirming Gary's report that he has used his sole discretion and authority as a minister responsible for immigration to grant approval for Buju Banton to visit and perform in Bermuda. Notwithstanding Mr. Myrie's incarceration, Minister Keynes said he's also keenly aware of the sensitivities regarding some of Mr. Myrie's music from decades ago. However, his most controversial songs, including Boom Bye Bye, have been removed from his catalog of music and will not be performed going forward. Minister Keynes believes that the social positives of Mr. Myrie's upcoming visit outweigh the negatives. Ms. Minister Kane said as it relates to Mr. Myrie's particular situation, he has served his mandated period of incarceration and has publicly said that he wishes to use his personal experience of incarceration as a way to uplift, motivate, and help others. Minister Keynes concluded, quote, due to Mr. Myrie's conviction and imprisonment in excess of two years, he must receive permission from the minister responsible for immigration to to be allowed to perform in Bermuda. Ultimately, we believe that if given the opportunity to perform in Bermuda, Mr. Myrie's performance will have an exceedingly positive effect on our community. The quote continues, I have reviewed all aspects of the matter, and as a result of these special circumstances articulated above, I have granted Mr. Mark Buju Banton Myrie permission to enter Bermuda, end quote. Once again, from Minister Keynes. However, LGBTQ spokesperson Winston Godwin, who is open that he is in a same-sex marriage has come out in defense of Buju Banton. Mr. Godwin, Godwin, whose Supreme Court challenge resulted in gay marriages being legalized here for the first time, believes the reggae artist can be held as an example of someone who changed their views positively. I mean, reggae music in general has 
always been, I guess, notoriously um, homophobic. Um, and I mean, while I understand, while many would be concerned with him performing, um, he has since made a public apology. Um, and he says that he has changed his views on homosexuality. Um, and personally, for me, I think people do change. Um, we've seen it time and time again, where people have their, their views have evolved on the issue of homosexuality. And if that truly is the case, and if, that, and if he truly has changed um, his opinion on the LGBT community, I personally don't see an issue with him performing. I think, like I said before, I think honestly, uh, many Bermudians could follow um, his lead and learn from him uh, with respect to growing and evolving um, and educating themselves on the LGBT community. In other news, members of the Bermuda Fire and Rescue Service responded to a vehicle fire in Smith Parish earlier this morning. Staff Officer Ellen Wilkinson told Bermuda Broadcasting News the cause of the blaze is now being investigated. We received a call at our central dispatch at 11.43 reporting a vehicle fire. We had four persons with one appliance respond to that area from the uh, Hamilton Fire Department. And upon arrival, they noticed a taxi which was smoking at the junction of Harrington Hundreds Road and Loquat Lane. Upon further investigation, they were able to ascertain that the vehicle it was actually derelict. So it wasn't actually on the road or it's not licensed to be on the road at the moment. It weren't uh, in use. So we did contact our fire investigator. So at this particular time, the, the actual origin of the fire is under investigation as we speak. Coming up, an armed robbery in Flats, the latest from AccuWeather and so much more. Stay with us. Cal is back. He's been hearing about open internet and wonders if it applies to Bermuda. The short answer is yes. Open internet or net neutrality is the principle that internet service providers refer to as ISPs must provide access to all lawful websites and online data equally, regardless of whether you're posting pictures to Instagram, watching your favorite sports team, or even streaming movies from Netflix. Without open internet, ISPs could influence what you see and how quickly you see it by speeding up some services and slowing down or even blocking your access to legal content or apps. The regulatory authority is developing rules for open internet to protect consumers by making it clear to ISPs what they can and cannot do with internet traffic. And we'd like your input. Just visit rab.bm and submit your feedback by clicking on the public consultation for open internet link between May 20th and June 28th. Make sure your voice is heard. For gear ready box, cloud DVR storage, more local channels on every device in your home. Get more with Fiber Wire TV. Hey Smokey, let's get lunch from the Marketplace Food Court. You know what? That sounds good. They have oxtails, pumpkin, curried lamb, lemon and chicken, sweet and sour ribs, vegetable stir fry, and the variety goes on. Their chefs are good. They'll set you right off of all the good carbons. And don't forget the special dishes from the island. It doesn't matter. Well, no matter what you feel like eating, Marketplace will have it. You know, it's quick, it's quality, and at prices you can count on. Visit us seven days a week. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Made for you daily at the Hamilton Marketplace Food Court. Turning to weather news, as you can see from our tower cam, tower cam, cloudy, but still a pleasant evening out there. The good news is that we have improving conditions as the week goes on, which is important for our May 24th holiday. Let's go to Accurate the headquarters for the latest forecast. AccuWeather is presented by BFNM Insurance Group. We now go to AccuWeather headquarters. The BFNM Insurance Group is pleased to bring you this forecast, and we are tracking a subtropical storm. It is heading in this direction. You can see it right here, the rotation counterclockwise. It is slowly moving to the north. Now what we're going to see, just a couple of spotty showers. So here we are, subtropical depression, Andrea. Winds around 35 miles per hour. It's moving north at eight miles per hour. And we're not gonna see much of this because much of the precipitation is going to stay to the south of us. It's going to develop into just a low pressure system. It's losing energy, losing 
cruising speed. So as it cruises just to the south of the island, it will be a low pressure system. We'll see extra clouds, those showers, maybe a rumble of thunder or two. Here's the radar. You can see that spotty precipitation right now to the south of us. It's going to increase through tonight and into tomorrow morning. Here are the winds. You can see they are whipping around with that system close by. As far as temperatures, we're at 77 degrees across the island. The humidity at 85. Winds out of the south, southwest, 10 to 15 knots. And the water temperature, 76 degrees. Now inside the reef, the waves are a little bit choppier today than they were yesterday. Two to three feet and outside three to six. Those numbers are going to increase tomorrow because a cold front is going to come sweeping through. That's going to make the angry just a little bit or the ocean a little bit angry compared to today. Low tide 4.50 p.m. on Tuesday and then again at 6 a.m. on Wednesday. And we do have a small craft warning out there through tomorrow night. It's not going to be the best conditions for boating. Tonight, a couple of thunderstorms around, unusually rough surf and also rip currents, a low of 71 degrees. Tomorrow, we'll see a shower or two. A thunderstorm is expected. And again, it's going to be pretty rough out there in the ocean with rip currents, a high of 77 degrees. Here is the future cast. And you can see that that precipitation, it is slowly moving to the east. That's because a cold front is sweeping in and that is going to bring in some cooler air and drier conditions. In Jamaica, it's pretty steamy, 88 degrees. They could see a storm. Trinidad at 94 degrees right now. Chance of uh, some showers and storms. Toronto at 63 degrees with plenty of clouds, but it's sunny in New York at 71 degrees. The extended forecast looks good. Once that front moves through, we'll see drier conditions, but temperatures drop to the low 70s. It's going to remain dry through Friday and then a low pressure system gets close Saturday. That will bring us some spotty showers, drier by Sunday at 76 degrees. Have a great night. AccuWeather was presented by BF&M Insurance Group. And in other news tonight, around 11.30 a.m. today, police officers responded to a reported armed robbery at Belvin's Variety and Flats. It appears that a lone male suspect entered the store brandishing a bladed article and demanded money. A quantity of cash was taken. However, during a police search of the area, a 59-year-old man was arrested in connection with this incident and is currently in police custody pending further inquiries. No injuries were sustained by staff. Any witnesses or members of the public with relevant information are now asked to call the Criminal Investigation Department on 247-1744. And some bad news for those of you looking to get your hands on one of those new Huawei mobile devices that are popular overseas. Google announced yesterday that they have begun blocking access to their various platforms for Huawei to comply with U.S. sanctions. Washington is actively taking steps to limit the Chinese company from the U.S. market over fears the company could be used by China for mass spying on Americans. Tarai Trot caught up with the folks at CPR Phone Repair in the Washington Mall to learn about the implications locally. Uh, what does it mean for those in Bermuda who have these devices? Not a lot. Um, the phones will continue to work just as they did before. Um, what it'll do is it'll cut off their access to any updates using Google servers, but Huawei have their own update servers. And then for any new phones, they won't be able to get Google Play Store, Google Keep, Google Photos, any of the Google services. Um, Android, the operating system is open source, but most of what we do day to day relies on Google. So those phones really won't work in the West um, anymore. I mean, Huawei has really undercut the competition in terms of its prices. Uh, so for those who may be looking to buy a Huawei device at a lower price, so you're saying they should think twice? Well, and also the big inroads Huawei has made recently is their high-end phones, the cameras are better than the best Samsungs or Apples now. And so I think that's quite troubling for the high-end manufacturers. So Samsung and Apple will be quite happy, I think, at this move. How popular are Huawei devices in Bermuda? Um, there have been some sold in Bermuda, but they're not very popular. Most of the ones we see in for repair are ones that um, international workers have brought to Bermuda. I don't think there's very many sold locally at all. We've sold them in the past, but perhaps a few dozen, not that many. And those phones will continue to work going forward. 
Huawei has since obtained a temporary license to operate in the U.S. while it deals with the U.S. sanctions. Meanwhile, Mr. Jones worries that prices for everyday products, including electronics that are made in China and ultimately imported to Bermuda, will increase as a result of tariffs placed on China by the Trump administration. A lot of the, the Chinese products we sell in Bermuda come via wholesalers in the U.S., so they'll enter the U.S., get taxed, and then end up um, coming to Bermuda. So I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of places um, end up with higher prices as a result of these Chinese tariffs. So we're talking about electronic devices mostly? Um, not so much for us, um, but potentially for some of the other people who source their devices in the United States. So we could see some uh, even higher expenses. Well, yeah, to go on top of the increase in the foreign currency purchase tax that affects everything imported into Bermuda that increased this year. Stay with us. We'll have more news after this short break. Enjoy memorable moments brought to you by Zipax. You can count on us. Seagler's Red Ripe Watermelons at $14.99 each. Fresh Purdue chicken thighs or drumsticks at $1.99 per pound. Poland Spring Water 24 pack bottles, hot price, $10.99. Match Life Briquettes, 3.1 pound bag, hot price, $7.99. Charmin Essential Strong Toilet Tissue, one roll, hot price, 99 cents. All stores open Monday through Saturday until 10 p.m. and Sunday 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. for your shopping convenience. You can count on us. Ford Get Ready Box, Cloud DVR Storage, more local channels on every device in your home. Get more with FiberWire TV. And you're watching the Tuesday edition of Bermuda Tonight. Well, young Bermudian Haley Smith has been cast in an immerse theater in London, England show where she performs in front of hundreds of people. Maya Palacio has a story. Less than a year after receiving her bachelor's in arts, festival management and drama from De Montfort University, 22-year-old Bermudian Haley Nakai Smith has been cast in an immersive theater show in London called Super Freak. The day before the audition, I was just like, uh, I don't want to go. Because I had this perception of, oh, everyone else is going to be better than me. Everyone is going to have this huge like, resume of all the different work experience that they've done in theater, and I hadn't done anything yet. So I was like, I don't want to go, but I talked to my mom. My mom was like, Haley, just go. So I went, and it was a two-hour audition. It was like a group audition, and I was like, oh, my God. As a triple threat performer, acting, singing, and dancing, Haley got an email the night of her audition saying she landed the role of Angela. Angela's a bit like held back and shy. She's a singer and a poet, a writer, and she's more about, she wants to pursue her dreams. She wishes that she could have the confidence like Grace, which is why she's like, Grace, do your thing, girl. Go support both of us, and when you come back, we'll move in together, we'll live together, travel the world, and do what we want to do. It's a bit about feminism, it's a bit about racism in there, it's a, it's a lot. The show was set for one month, but after sold out tickets and a shining review from The Stage UK, it's been continued for the entire summer. It's kind of exciting because I didn't know what I was getting into when I first started. And I was like, oh, this is going to be great, you know, a little show for one month. And then when they were like, guys, we're going to continue the show, I was like, what? <laughs> and it's great because I have such a lead role in it that 
I'm happy to be acting. Unlike simply watching a theater show, immersive theater is when the audience is involved with the show physically and verbally. So the show is an immersive dining theater experience. You're walking into this beautiful rose bar, it's called, where you sit and chill and you get introduced to the owner of the club. And me and Grace enter and we're like, oh my gosh, guys, we've, oh my God, how are we gonna get in? So it's interactive in a sense where we're trying to break into this club. So we're talking to audience members, getting to know them, getting them to love our characters a little bit so they'll help us sneak into the hottest club in New York. Her advice for young Bermudians who want to become dancers, actors, and singers is simple. You just have to go to every single audition, in my opinion. No audition is a bad audition. Just go because you never know who you're going to meet and how you're going to get it. This job was completely random. Saw it on Instagram, and now I have a job for a few months. Haley is set to go back to England to continue the show, as well as complete her master's at DeMontfort University. This is Mara Palacio reporting for the Bermuda Broadcasting News. Now Earl Baisden has tonight's sports report. During an awards ceremony last night in the UK, Nathan Trott from West Ham United picked up the Premier League Division 2 Save of the Year award. It's the under 23 save of the season and the winner is Nathan Trott from West Ham. Trot save came with West Ham United leading Liverpool FC 1-0. He would dive to his right to deny a Liverpool striker shot from close range. Trot pushed the shot onto the upright before the play was cleared. The Confederation of North, Central American and Caribbean Association Football, which make up CONCACAF, revealed the preliminary 40-player roster submitted by the 16 participating member associations, which also include Bermuda for the CONCACAF Gold Cup, which kicks off next month. Bermuda's team consists of 13 local base players, and with the news of Oxford United releasing John T. Smith back on May 9th, the team also has 10 unattached players. The North Village Rams have announced that Kenny Thompson is now back at the club. Thompson has been named the club's football director and he's happy to be back. North Village uh, has a special place for me, um, ideal place for North Village uh, in my last season of, of football in Bermuda. Um, <clears throat> and I was there before as, as football director. Mm -hmm. um, the transition from North Village happened as a result of uh, taking the role of, of youth uh, director at the Premier Football Association. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there a lot of the things are still in place there. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so now just kind of, you know, they've come away since, since then. Um, since 2002, you know, I've come a long way as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm not the same person that, that uh, in the same level that I was back then. Mm -hmm. So. Hence now the, the, the catchphrase that it's now, now no Village Vision uh, 2.0. Tyler Butterfield will not take part in the 2019 Bermuda Day Half Marathon Derby. Butterfield's wife, Nikki, who won the female race last year, confirmed in a message to a question, quote, Tyler won't be able to make it this year. I'm supposed to be on bed rest before having our fourth baby due June 28th, so we need daddy around for these last six weeks. End quote. Also, to date, Christopher Exwanek has yet to enter the race. Jillian Tessera began competing in the final Vulcan Swad International Horse Jumping event in the Netherlands of the season. Tessera on day one competed in just one event. Tessera and Escalada competed in the CSI 2 1.40 meter in two phases special with the second phase against the clock class. The player clocked a clear round in the first phase. They would then clock a time of 32-36 in the second phase against the clock, but they would have four penalty fall points. Kamal Levrock and his Nottinghamshire second 11 teammates went down by 32 runs in their second 11 trophy match against Durham seconds. Durham batted first and would score 276 for 8 in their lot of 50 overs. Levrock would bowl 9 overs. He took 2 for 64. In reply, Nottinghamshire were bowled out for 244 with Levrock out for 6. Staying with cricket news, the Bermuda Cricket Board's Premier and First Division cricket season resumed and the Central County Cup combined produced a total of 2,578 runs over seven matches. The highest score of the weekend for a team was 339 Tough Dogs put on the board against Western Stars in their Central County battle. Derek Bengman from Tough Dogs was the top scorer of the weekend with a knock of 125 against Western Stars. Jordan De Silva, also from Tough Dogs, was the second highest scorer with 104 in the 
same match. Dean Stevens from Cleveland County and Quasi James from Willicott both scored 100 with Stevens not out. With figures of 11 overs, 4 made and 6 for 16, Kamal Lavrock from K. Thorpe Cricket Club led the Bermuda Bowlers department, while Malachi Jones from Southampton Rangers had the second best figures of 9 overs, 1 made and 5 for 28. Seth Campbell from Western Stars had the third best figures of 10 overs, 5 for 57. Kim McCallan competed in the 2019 Thunder on Cocoa Beach Offshore Powerboat Race. McCallan was the crew in Nobody's Business in the Pro Stock V Class. They were declared sixth out of the ten starting boats. They would run out of fuel just before the finish line. Therefore, was a DNF and was towed back to the wet pit. Meanwhile, ten boats took to the St. George's Harbor to begin the 2019 Bermuda Powerboat Association race season. David Sally and Matthew Smith won the A Class race, while Quincy Doling and Ty Bean took the checkered flag in the B Class. The D-Class race was won by Sean Butterfield and Jermel Woolridge, and the S-Class race was won by Henry Tolbert and Andrew Cottingham. The 2018-19 Bermuda Field hockey season ended with a prize presentation. The Budgies went through the season undefeated in the women's division, going 13-0 for their 40 points. Pink Robbins finished second with 25 points, while the Ravens finished third with 23 points. Emma Ranger was the league-leading goal scorer, while the junior-leading goal scorer was Lauren Cardwell. Jessica Hollis was named the Senior League Player of the Year, while Christina Weiser-Stevens was named the Junior Player of the Year. I'm Earl Baisden with Bermuda Broadcasting Sports. Overall, in general, March and April has been pretty good training-wise and a lot of miles. Um, looking excited to come on next month. The history is everything. It's only the one race where everyone really comes out in terms of um, support. Um, many a times you can win any race on the island, but if you don't win May 24th, it doesn't really count. So your season really depends on your May 24th outcome. Both courses are challenging. Um, if one's more challenging than other, the other, Bermuda's typically a very hilly population, so there's no really flat and fast courses there. So I expect challenges from the course in itself. I don't think I'll ever feel as pressured um, as, I hit, as I was in 2016 when I hadn't won it before. That was the most pressure. Now I won it uh, twice. I definitely head into the race um, much different. I want to run fast. Um, I've never really beaten anyone. I've never beaten a, a former champion or previous champion. Um, I, I sometimes call it cheap victories in that 2016 I beat Trey Simons when he came off a really hard collegiate se um, season. 2018, last year I beat Sean Trotten. I'm Tony Waterman, coming up on The Breakdown this week. Operation China, Beijing is on track to be the world's largest insurance market in 15 years. A great opportunity for the industry, but are firms digitizing fast enough to keep up with Chinese players? Transport, talent, and tourism, breaking through the bottlenecks to optimize the industry. Plus, do you want regular or do you want strawberry? Lemonade, the gateway product to a future business, a new school program teaching kids the skills they'll need to be the future entrepreneurs of Bermuda. That's Thursday at 8 p.m. on ZBM TV9. The 110th Bermuda Day Half Marathon Derby is here. Join ZFB TV7 and Power 95 FM with all of the excitement starting at 8 a.m. with pre-marathon broadcast live from St. George's with Ian Wallace. He will bring you live interviews with current and former competitors. Ian will keep you updated on what's happening in the East End. That's Friday, May 24th, Bermuda Day on ZFB TV7 and Power 95 FM Radio. Brought to you by BAC Universal Electric, Lindo's Group of Companies, Security Associates, The Phoenix Stores Limited, and JB Realty and Associates Services. That's our newscast. I'm Diane Brewer. Thanks for sharing your Tuesday evening with us, everyone. Good night.